In the previous section, you got your crash course in models, but certainly there's way more to cover. But that's all I want to cover just to get you started. So here's what we're going to do. Let's just get rid of these two methods right here. And now we have a very, very simple person model. So now we want to create the view. We're going to move on to views 101 in this lesson. So how can you think of a view? Well, one thing with Backbone is that if you bring your existing MVC knowledge, maybe from a server-side framework like Rails or CodeIgniter or Laravel, it's not going to perfectly cross over. You need to sort of retool your understanding of an MVC framework. And in fact, really, Backbone isn't MVC. You could call it maybe MV star, as we'll dig into more as we continue this course. In Backbone, think of your view not as just the HTML, but as the representation of a single element, if that makes sense. So for example, let's say you have a list of tasks, or let's continue with our project here, a list of people. Well, you could have a view for all of those people. So you could have a people list view, but you could also have a view for a single person. And for that single person, the element would be maybe a list item, and that would be the views root element. Now this view can respond to events, it can have its own methods, it can trigger actions on a model, it can listen for changes to its associated model. And that way it can be really convenient because if at any point you need to update something related to that particular element, you know exactly where to go. Now that should probably still be a little bit confusing, and that's okay. Let's dig into it and then you'll understand more. I will create a new variable called person view. And this time we're going to extend a view. Now by default, what Backbone's going to do is it's gonna create this root tag for you, unless you override that. And that tag name will be a div. Let me prove it to you. Let's go ahead and view our project in the browser once again. If I run person view, yeah, we do have that. So let's say var person view equals a new person view. By the way, notice that I'm taking these types and beginning them with a capital letter, sort of like a class. Let's keep it like that, and now I'm going to run person view, and let's see what we have in this object. Well, notice that we have a lot of things here. Most notably, though, we have this L and dollar sign L. That's really interesting. So person view dot L is just a div. Backbone created that for us. But check this out, you'll really like this. Person view dot dollar sign L, as you might expect, is this element wrapped in jQuery. So now you don't have to manually do this caching. It will be done for you. But what if we want to override that? Maybe for our person, the tag name should be a list item because we're going to have a list of people. Well, in that case, you can override it by saying tag name is li. So let's try this again. I'm going to redo it for our person view. And now I'll do person view dot L and notice that this time we've updated it to a list item. So that's an important one to know. We can also do things like give it a class. So maybe we want this class name to be person. Well, now if I reload it and we try it one more time, notice that we have appended the class name. And the same thing is going to be true for ID some person, which isn't a good name, but just to show you that it does work. Now we've created a list item with an ID of some person and a class of person. So note how much cleaner this is than manually having to build up some kind of HTML string in your JavaScript, which in most scenarios is a bit of a code smell. Now in our case, I'm gonna remove these because we don't need a class name or an ID. We just need the tag name. So we also have this constructor method. And if you're familiar with object-oriented programming, you know that when you create a new instance of a class, there will be some kind of constructor method that will automatically run when the class is instantiated. And Backbone offers this as well. It's called initialize. So let's try this. Let's simply console.log. Hi there. Now, if I reload this and we run it, you're gonna get high there. So now we have proof that when we do extend a view or a model, the initialize method will automatically run. And that's important to remember. Now we also have this method called render, and this is something you're gonna see a lot. Think of the render method as the one that takes your template or your root element and groups it together with the associated data. So think about it, we have a person view but we are separating that from the model or the data. So the way it would work is we would create a new instance of person view. And once again, we will assign that to person view. 
and then we would pass in the name of our model. Well, we don't have a model yet, so let's say var person, and I'll scroll down just a ways, var person equals a new person. All right, so let's recap. We began by creating a new instance of this person model. We have not overridden anything, so this person is going to have the attributes name, age, and occupation. Now, we're gonna create a new view, and we're going to pass in the model will be person. So at this point, when we create this new instance of person view, within here, we have access to the model. Let's console.log this.model. And this is one of the few things that Backbone will automatically allow you to add. If I reload the page, now you can see when the initialize method is called, we console.log the model, and notice that we still have access to everything that we've worked with. So now, when we render it, we could say this.l, and that would be the jQuery wrapped version of a list item node. We're gonna set its HTML equal to, and let's see what we want. For now, why don't we just get the name attribute from the model? So I could say this.model.get name. So here's what's gonna happen when we do that. Let's reload the page, and if I come back really quickly, we created the model, we created the view. So now, if I run person view, we do have this new backbone view. If I do person view.l, we just have an empty list item. But now, let's render it. And when we call render, we're gonna take that list item and we're gonna fill up its contents with the name of the person. Let's try it. Person view dot render, and then person view dot L once again. And now notice that we have populated that and we haven't nested a single bit of HTML into our code. And that's far more organized even if at first this might seem like too much work. Trust me, as your projects grow, this will be increasingly more convenient. Now, some people like to immediately render a view when it's initialized. And to do this, you would simply run this.render. Whether or not you do this truthfully just depends on your project. So with that, let's try it again. Now I can just run personview.l, and the render method has already been called. So then at that point, I could say document.body. This isn't ideal, but just for example, personview.l. And now we've appended a list item. Now let's extend this just a little bit more in this lesson. Let's say rather than the person, we wanna have the name of the person and then maybe their age in parentheses. Okay, well, right now we're just kind of appending these values. So let's continue on that and then we'll start to realize that we need a better solution. So we'll say the name, and then within parentheses, we'll get this.model.get age, close parentheses, and then a dash, and finally this.model.get occupation. All right, let's try that. If I reload personview.l, and notice that we do have that. So once again, document.body, and we append to that and we do get the output that we would expect. But as you're guessing right now, this is not very pretty. And you can imagine this is just a simple list item. What about when we have anchor tags and strong tags and image tags with alt text? Very, very quickly, this becomes an anti-pattern. Instead, we need to figure out a way to create a nice reusable template so that we're not muddying up our JavaScript. And that's what we're gonna take a look at in the next video.